It's not getting out? I think the message is out, but a lot of people don't want to believe it. And some people feel they should, in modern society, they want to pick their own poison. Uh, that's uh, another concept that has come up. I think that a large part of it is due to the continued promotion and advertising of cigarettes. Uh, the, they are still advertised in ways that would tend to appeal to the young or appeal to groups that uh, you're in if you use them and you're not if you don't. Uh, the large advertising campaigns for women to start smoking and that this is the in thing to do. And that's had a big impact. That's been going on now for almost a decade and we're beginning to see an increase a marked increase in the incidence of lung cancer among women. This is a newer phenomenon. It followed by many decades after that seen in men. It paralleled and followed uh, the use of cigarettes by women, which was extremely rare until about 20 years ago. Increasingly, we're seeing lung cancer among younger and younger people. Uh, it is still a disease we see mostly in people in uh, their middle years of life but increasingly, we're beginning to see patients in their early 30s, late 20s, with lung cancer, both women and men. And these patients are smokers. You've talked about the past and the present. What is the future trend, and is it an ominous one? Well, the trend is an ominous one. I think that uh, educational methods uh, thus far, while they've been tried increasingly, I think that most everyone in the United States has heard the information. I doubt if there's anybody that hasn't heard about the association between lung cancer and smoking. Uh, some choose not to believe it, others choose to ignore it, and lung cancer isn't the only smoking-associated cancer. It's been calculated that about a third of all cancers are actually uh, associated with smoking, including those of the bladder, of the pancreas. These are cancers for which we have no treatment. That's the other ominous part of this, that there's the efforts in cancer research have led to uh, more effective diagnosis and treatment for a number of forms of cancer, but it has not included the smoking-associated cancers. These are cancers that are really caused by chemical carcinogens that are present in the cigarette uh, when it is smoked. And these are the most difficult kinds of cancers for us to develop treatments or cures for. So the trend is very ominous and the smoking-associated cancers are becoming more and more common. So that when this patient came to the clinic to be seen for the first time with a little trouble with cough uh, and uh, some uh, blood in his sputum, he already had evidence of spread of the cancer of the opposite lung. And not just the lung, uh, it would be present in the liver or the brain or elsewhere. And so we have to view it as a systemic disease, and it's one for which right now we really have no truly effective treatment available. This person was a smoker? Absolutely. And a person with this condition would die within a very short time? Yes, within six months on the average. Millions of dollars are spent every year looking for evidence linking smoking with various diseases. Much of that money comes from the federal government. But at the same time, the federal government spends $17 million a year subsidizing the tobacco industry. Evan White reports on a one-of-a-kind tobacco research center in Kentucky. A tobacco barn in Kentucky. For the farmer, what's going on here is the next to last step in a long process that happens every year. The crop has been harvested and aged. Leaves are now tied into hands, then put on sleds, then taken to auction. Kentucky Burley. More than $600 million worth of Burley were sold last year in warehouses like these throughout Kentucky. For 100 years, it's been the state's number one cash crop. In Kentucky, as in North Carolina and Virginia, there's no question, tobacco is king. And if tobacco is king, then this is its castle, the Kentucky Tobacco and Health Research Institute in Lexington. There's no place like it in all the world. Sophisticated computers are used in the labs here in order to analyze tobacco and smoke. Scientists experiment with burley and produce hybrid tobacco with varying amounts of tar, nicotine, and other chemicals. How important is tobacco to Kentucky? Well, in 1970, the state legislature created the institute by imposing a special one-half cent tax per pack of cigarettes sold in the state. That works out to roughly three and a half million dollars a year to be used solely for tobacco research. 
because it depends on the industry for its existence, it's not surprising the Institute's findings usually show smoking to be a non-harmful activity. Smoking is a high-frequency event in our society with a low frequency of complication if everything said about tobacco uh, were to be true. Dr. Gary Hubber is the director of the Institute. He argues that the research done here is not biased, that their objective is to find the truth, and that there never has been any conclusive proof that smoking causes cancer or anything else. A very small percentage, well less than 1%, may develop lung cancer. The same is true for the other diseases that have been linked by statistical association to tobacco smoking. There is within that smoking population some individuals who are more prone or susceptible to develop those diseases. All the research aside, the fact remains that a record number of cigarettes were purchased last year. Although the health problems and various methods of how to quit smoking capture the headlines, the truth is that a lot of people smoke and have no intention of giving it up. Why do you smoke cigarettes? Because I enjoy it. It's uh, been part of my life since I've been 15 years old, and I enjoy it. There's a lot of information out about the health hazards of cigarette smoking. That doesn't discourage you? Not, none whatsoever. I figure once you put your feet on the floor in the morning, you start taking risks all day long, whether it be smoking, criminals, automobile drivers, whatsoever, you know. And why should I refrain from smoking when I enjoy it? And it has done me no harm for the better part of, let's say, 46 years. Your father smoked? My whole family smoked. My father smoked, my uh, grandmother smoked, in fact, my grand-aunt smoked a pipe. And my gr grand-aunt, my grandmother lived to their 90s, they had a little bit of gin every day also. My father's in his late 80s, he smoked three packages of cigarettes a day. And uh, my brother smoked, all of, the whole family smokes. So th no problem. So why should I give it up? What would you do if you found out that you had some lung cancer or had some, one of the problems that's associated with I go on cigarettes. smoking. I would. Because, you know, we got to die of something. We're not going to live to be 150 years old, you know. Someday i got to die of something. So it may be lung cancer. So that's my death, you know. Nothing would make you want to quit smoking? No, nothing. Nothing. Does it bother you that other people smoke, your wife, your children, and so on? No, I have five children of my own. And at one time, except for my daughter, all my four sons smoked. And today, there's only one son that smokes. The rest have quit, but I've never said anything, a word to them. This has been their decision. And uh, I've known a lot of people that have quit smoking. And I've asked them, asked them after abstaining for a number of years, have they felt any better? And they said, no, they have not felt any better. So I don't know what the uh, medical benefits are. I just don't know other than the fact that I'm going to enjoy myself <laughs> while I light up. <laughs> John Light also likes to smoke. On May 9, 1982, John Light suffered the first of two heart attacks. He says he died and was brought back to life. Now he's trying desperately to kick the habit. Are you convinced that smoking caused your heart attack? Well, I'll take your word for it. I've fought him for years and years and years. I'm probably the most stubborn smoker you ever seen. Why is that? They've told me that it causes emphysema, it causes cancer, and it causes TB and everything else. And I've fought. They haven't convinced me of anything until May 9th. When I, when I come to at the Tucson General Hospital, I heard the man telling my wife the reason I was screaming was because they had to hit me with the paddles twice to bring me back to life. I told her to go throw all my cigarettes in the dumpster and get rid of them. That finally convinced you? That convinced me that uh, they could be right. Are you still smoking now or have you stopped? I stopped and started right back again. You're smoking now? Right. You realize what that could do to you? All right, I've got uh, probably 15 specialists who have been on my back, my wife is on my back, my stepson is on my back right now. And I just keep reaching for another one. Of course, if you keep reaching, you, the next heart attack could be the one that gets you. Could be. 